All right, and welcome to Inside Stabler Arena. I'm Joey Draper alongside Tyler Carlon. We have some playoff basketball for you. Penn State Lehigh Valley against Penn State Hazleton. Tyler, this must be such a tremendous opportunity for you to see a playoff game because it's been about 10 years since the New York Jets were in one. So how excited are you? Dude, you said you were going to roast me in the beginning, and I will admit that was a pretty good one. But no, nah, it's actually nice to see playoff uh, atmosphere, I guess you could say, because I have not seen it in 10 years. You are correct. <laughs> Well, Penn State Lehigh Valley against Penn State Hazleton. Two times they met in the regular season. Penn State Lehigh Valley took them both. The first meeting they won pretty easily. The second meeting, Hazleton stayed in it just until about the uh, middle of the fourth quarter when Lehigh Valley was able to make a late run. How does Penn State Hazleton, who only are dressing seven players tonight, stay with this Lehigh Valley team? Well, you kind of saw at the end of the year, it looked like Penn State Lehigh Valley kind of got a little rough towards the end of the year as most of their games got a lot closer than they wanted to be. And so, honestly, just play exactly how you did in that game against Penn State Lehigh Valley the second time because they were in that game the whole time and it just came down to the fourth quarter where they didn't have that depth really to stay with Penn State Lehigh Valley and so I think that's what's, what it's going to really come down to is depth and stamina if they can just keep up the pace or just try and stay with it control the tempo they do great tonight and for Penn State Lehigh Valley they averaged 85 points per game in the regular season but back when we were first covering them the first couple of games they were up in the 90s and 100s, so like you mentioned, they did take it down a notch, but this offense is still very much so talented and one you don't want to face. Yeah, Penn State Lehigh Valley, they have so many weapons in their starting five, and then they can just sub five. They, they do that clean sweep sub five, and they're right into it. Like Everybody on their team can score. You look at their stats, and everybody's averaging at least a point a game, which is crazy because some teams you don't see that. Right. And so it's honestly just nice to see Penn State Lehigh Valley be able to do that, and that's what I think is going to come down to tonight. Well, the playoffs might not be a thing the Jets are used to, but for Penn State Lehigh Valley, nine years in a row they've made it under Coach Laurie Khalil, and Derek has some more information for us. We're going to send it to our third member. Coaches before the game. We'll start with Coach Laurie Khalil. She said what her team needs to do today is be aggressive and attack the rim and always be in attack mode. And I also asked her about her message to her team for the postseason. She said, don't change what you've been doing, continue what you've been doing all season long and have that guide you. I also saw, talked to Coach Jeff Onushko from Penn State Hazleton. He said the same thing, always be in attack mode and always remember what you got here in the postseason. I asked him about the other two meetings. He said the other two meetings don't matter. He goes, the third meeting, well, people will remember since the postseason. If they win today, they move on. Guys, back to you. All right, Derek, thanks. And for Penn State Hazleton, 13-10 and 10 in the regular season. They got 12 out of their 13 wins in the conference, so they are very good against the other Penn State schools, but this Lehigh Valley team is one that is going to be tough to beat tonight. But how do, you, how do you think they get it done? They are a team that only averages about 60 points per game, so obviously they're going to want to try to keep the game within the 50s to 60s range, but that's not easy to do against Leah Valley. Yeah, no, I like his message, though, to his team, Anush Coach Anushko, is we've played them twice, we've lost twice, this is the third time, but this is the one that really only matters to them. And so I think that's a great message to give your team. Just go out here and you had it really close last game, just this time just finish. Honestly, just finish, finish, finish. And that's everything you do when you're out on the floor tonight, especially, more importantly, finish the game. Absolutely. Well, this old saying is it's hard to beat a team three times. We'll see if Penn State Lehigh Valley is able to do it. Tip-off is coming up right after this. At St. Luke's Orthopedic Care, you can trust us with your hands, feet, shoulders, hips, and knees. Because healthy bones and joints mean you can do more. You can trust us to recommend the right approach to care, including joint sparing treatments and therapies. And when surgery is the only choice, we offer options to help you heal faster, including technology-assisted joint replacements and muscle sparing hip surgery. St. Luke's, the orthopedic care you trust, now more than ever. The team that we have put together of sport performance coaches and athletic trainers is why parents should choose St. Luke's University Health Network for their sport performance needs. St. Luke's and our coaches are going to provide the safest and most comprehensive training environment that a student athlete would want and I, I don't think there's anything in this area that can rival it. All right, and welcome back. I'm Joey Draper, joined by Tyler Carlbon. We are about 20 seconds away. We're going to get things over to the national anthem, and then we'll provide the starting lineups to you. And as we toss it to the PA announcer, he'll be d announcing the national anthem, and I believe we're going to have it live sung again. It's always a entertainment piece that Penn State Lehigh Valley likes to do, is either former students, alumni, 
or current students like to sing it, and we'll find out. That was Brianna Mobley with a superb rendition of the national anthem. He gave Chris Stapleton a run for his money, man, on that one. Absolutely. Maybe she'll be at next year's Super Bowl. I hope. The Jets won't. Anyway, let's get into the starting lineups tonight for Penn State Hazleton, who are the visitors on the scoreboard. And it's Rocky Curry, Jenny Rivera, Cassandra Rodriguez, Justine Bernazow, and Azaria Johnson. Tyler, who is going to stand out and be that leader that Penn State Hazleton needs tonight? It's going to be Cassandra Rodriguez. She leads the team in 15 points per game, but also Curry and Johnson are also averaging double digits points per game. So I think those three are going to be very big for Hazleton's success tonight. And for Penn State Lehigh Valley, this starting lineup that has been so amazing this entire season. Ja Oliver, she's a senior. Gianna Toretta, Sam Columna, Sage Christopher, the other senior, and Chanel Lee. These five have been a brick wall that you do not want to break down and just talk about this starting five. Yeah, Chanel Lee averaging 14 points a game. She's been great. Sam Columna averaging double digits. And Janelle Oliver, she's been averaging 9.6, close to double di digits, so she's up there. But also, we mentioned earlier the depth of this team, so... It's not just the starters, it's the bench, and the players that can come off the bench for Penn State Lehigh Valley is spectacular. Absolutely, and while they are the starting five, they normally don't be, last about five minutes out there. It's, Coach. Like a, it's like a hockey line, you know, change. You yeah. know, the, the way they, they rotate players in and out, it's it's kind of cool to see. And then, well, for us, not for the other team. Yeah, <laughs> Coach Khalil is very creative with their strategies. Although lately she's been doing maybe just two or three at a time. When Derek and I covered them the last time they played Hazleton, they weren't going five for five all the time, but they are certainly known to do that. And the depth is certainly going to be a key tonight, as you highlighted. And it's not like I want to continue to say it, but it's just stating the obvious at Penn State Lehigh Valley when they have the depth. As long as they're hitting their shots, it's going to be a tough night for the opposition. Yeah, I'm expecting... A pretty good basketball game. I mean, the first time we met, we mentioned it was a blowout, 102 to 36. But then the last time they played, 61-49. So and Hazleton led at halftime yeah. and into the third quarter. So. so like you don't know, like Hazleton, they could uh, really just you know maybe come out on top if they just uh, can keep up with Penn State Lehigh Valley. That is the key, keeping up with Penn State Lehigh Valley. You don't want to let them get comfortable in transition. Coach Khalil loves when the game just flows up and down the court. She doesn't like whistles from the referees. She doesn't like out of bounds. She doesn't like any of that. She likes to just free flow up and down the court. And we are ready to go inside Stabler Arena. Playoff basketball, baby. Absolutely. 
Chanel Lee will tip it for Penn State Lehigh Valley. Her opposite number is Azaria Johnson. And it's the visitors who have it first. Here comes Rocky Curry. Johnson gets it back and she's quick. And here we go, right inside. Missed it off the glass. An offensive rebound in there. That was Curry saving the possession. And Azaria Johnson will try again and scores. That's exactly what Penn State Hazleton's gonna have to do is make the little shots up close. And if they can't make them, get the rebound and put it back up. Toretta for three, banks it in. It's Sunday, but it works for her and Lehigh Valley quickly on top. Great start there by Penn State Lehigh Valley. Just that's the tempo we talk about, how quick they are just to quickly get down there. Well, here's Hazleton getting quick to the other end, but a lost ball is able to allow the Lehigh Valley defenders back and Ja Oliver nearly comes right into our table here, but possession to Hazleton. Very quick start here. It's, we, <laughs> seems like a track meet to start off this basketball game. Azaria Johnson will inbound it to Curry. Little dish pass, Azaria Johnson. That's a blocking foul against Toretta. She's got all the stats for Lehigh Valley so far with three points and now a foul. As Johnson has a little bit of a limp going on here. Just 45 seconds into the first quarter and only two subs for Hazleton, so she's Got to push through it if she can. Quick three right off the inbound is well off the mark that time from Cassandra Rodriguez. She made a few of them the last time I covered Penn State Hazleton with Derek. Derek, if you're just tuning in, is our third member of our crew on the sidelines. He'll next be seed at halftime. Here's that ball movement that Lehigh Valley likes to implement. Columna for three. Well short. Rebound and a stop for Hazleton. Azaria. And Johnson's on the drive, kicks it. Rocky Curry tried to bank it in one go. Azaria Johnson's owning the glass right now. She's having a great start to this basketball game. Here she is again, right on cue. Sets up Rocky Curry, who gets it to go. And Penn State Hazleton is coming out and not letting Lehigh Valley surprise them at all. Chanel Lee quickly for two. She's one of your favorites to watch. Absolutely, I love the way that Johnson's been, as you see her right here, taking control of this basketball game for Penn State Hazleton. Here's a three up and on the way. Rodriguez, no good that time, Oliver the board. It's a two on two, now two v three. And Oliver smartly backs it out, waits to get even. Christopher underneath, as Aria Johnson tapped it away. It'll stay here with 21 to shoot. Here we go, the starters lasted two minutes and one second. Five and five out now. And the person coming in here for Penn State Lehigh Valley to keep an eye out for is Kaya Mobley. Coach Anushko, he literally mentioned Kaya Mobley when we spoke to him early in the game. He's like, she took advantage of us last time, and we really have to keep an eye on her. Kaya Mobley was our player of the game against Hazleton last time around. Here is Newman on the drive. Goes up wildly. It wouldn't go. Rebound to Jenny Rivera. Now with Justine Bernazal. Out of bounds. It'll go back to Lehigh Valley. Great defense there by Kaya Mobley and Newman pushing her over to the sideline and really using that sideline as an extra defender. Here's Nyla Newman. Now Kaya Mobley. Nia's gonna try a three, too strong. Crozier couldn't get to the boards. And now Hazleton the other direction, Azaria Johnson. Rodriguez, dangerous pass, still finds its target. Here's Rocky Curry, nice ball fake against Crozier for two. Great hesitation step there by Curry to be able to get underneath the defender and go up with the layup. Lehigh Valley moves it around. Newman a floater, off the mark. Offensive rebound, now a tie up, ball's loose. Lehigh Valley still survives, not anymore. It's still bouncing around. Newman, Mobley. Newman on the drive with a right, won't go. And the ball is still loose, and here comes Hazleton. Bernazau's up and forward with it. Throws it into the middle. Rocky Curry, and I think that was blocked. And it'll stay with Hazleton. Well, this is the way Coach Khalil likes the game to be played, but Lehigh Valley needs to execute at the other end. Exactly, and uh, one thing is, is that the way we just saw at the other end was that's what this playoff basketball game is going to be like. Ball on the ground all the time, bodies on the floor, and... There, it just comes down to making the shots the first time, so you don't have to be able to get the ball on the floor or anything like that. Seeing, I, oh, go ahead. But both sides are going to have to be able to just start making shots the first time instead of secondary opportunities. 
Seeing all five players dive on the court is a coach's dream. Here's Rocky Curry backing down Crozier, and she got a piece of that. Good defense there, Aliyah Crozier. Now Nia Newman to Kaya Mobley. Mobley, wow, that was a wild reverse, but Raina Young's able to save the possession. Goes up, it's short. And that was last touched by Lehigh Valley, and to Hazelton it goes, and I believe that was last touched by Raina Young. And here come two subs for Hazelton. They only have two. Natasha Feliciano is in, along with Ashley James. Jenny Rivera will get a rest, along with Justine Bernazal. Hazelton, the three seed. Trying to upset Penn State Lehigh Valley, but we're into the first quarter, so lots of basketball left, and there's a foul against Kaya Mobley. And one thing to keep an eye on is, as you mentioned in, before the show, is uh, stamina. Was because uh, right now Johnson, she started off red hot, absolutely controlling both sides of the game for Penn State Hazelton. And right now she looks a little fatigued out there, and we're only a couple minutes into the first quarter. That's what Coach Khalil likes. She likes to tire out the opponents. And here is Azaria Johnson. Curry. Fired it back in there, and one, or no, a walk first. A traveling violation first, so that bucket does not count. Now in for Lehigh Valley, for the first time tonight, Gabby Giracello, along with Lyric Reyes. Thrown across to Giracello, and she walked. Hey, it's happened at both sides now, back to back, so back to step one. Yeah. Well, these two teams do turn it over a lot. Hello, here's a baseball pass. We're in spring training. Azaria Johnson going up, but she's rejected. Ja Oliver got back in time. Good foul there by Ja Oliver. Rather make her work for it than uh, get the easy two. It's a really nice full court pass that time on the inbounds. Something that the last time these two met, Penn State Lehigh Valley, fell asleep a couple times on and they certainly were there. That was a near walk. Instead it's gonna be two for Rocky Curry. Great start here for Penn State Hazelton. I really can't say anything that they're doing wrong. No, they're doing a great job at executing. Reyes' shot is way off the mark, but it'll stay here. I just would recommend one thing is when they come down on offense, slowing it down a little bit so A, they can catch their breath and B, just stay in it for a longer period of time. Definitely agree. Little discussion going on here. And it's been resolved. Here's Ja Oliver. Giracella with her left. Lovely reverse. Gabby G with the handles and the two. And then out of bound, kickball violation, so it's still hit with Hazelton. Very tough shot there to get that too. It was not an easy one, but she ended up getting it. Now a near steal off the inbound. Oliver just couldn't keep it in, and Hazelton get it across, only for Oliver to come and get it this time. The senior in her last cut couple games as a Lehigh Valley player leaving it all out there here she comes then she throws it away to Hazelton it goes she's a thousand point scorer has so many accolades just couldn't connect with her teammate on that occasion and now as Aria Johnson hit the deck off camera as they are trying to move around for this inbound very aggressive first quarter just as we predicted Rocky Curry Gets help here from Feliciano. Azaria Johnson. Eight to shoot for Rocky Curry and company. Feliciano drives inside. Curry's gonna go up strong. How is there no contact anywhere? The refs are letting them play tonight. Bodies hitting the floor. Here's Oliver all the way in transition, and now a foul is called. They, I will agree with you that the officials really are letting them play tonight. It, it feels like at both ends it's just been 
countless. You feel like there's going to be a call called, but they aren't going to call it. So maybe that'll play to your advantage a little bit. Maybe. It could leave a bruise on you. Here's the inbound. Oliver thought about the three, goes inside, foul line. Jumper good. And Lehigh Valley has the lead. Running the baseline, gets it inbounds. Azaria Johnson will go. Hazelton now equal the numbers. Feliciano. And this is what you want to see. Slow it down and work at your own pace. Rodriguez to Feliciano. Cassandra wants it back. She'll get it back. Puts up a three off the mark. Rebound is fought for, and here's Columna. Thrown forward to Christopher. Tapped on to herself. Now Columna has it. The ball is flying everywhere in this first quarter. Here's Toretta on the inside to Crozier. His, her floater won't go. Here come Hazelton in transition now. Feliciano goes in strong. Oh, a couple moves, but she couldn't get the finish. Thrown ahead to Columna. She dishes it to Crozier, who left it short. Christopher will fight for it. She leaves it short, but a foul is called. One, two, three, four, four bodies on the floor. And Christopher will get two looks at the foul line, but look at this transition play. Yeah, the missed opportunity there, ball on the ground, missed opportunity. Uh, but I do think that this is going to be big for Penn State Lehigh Valley is the height they have. Uh, with Aaliyah Crozier standing at six foot one, she's obviously the tallest player out on the floor. And I think that's going to play to their advantage a little bit. Christopher's first is perfect. She is the second senior for Penn State Lehigh Valley this season. And she's one for two at the line this season, or excuse me, this occasion. And here's Rocky Curry. That's a fired in there pass, and the roll won't go that time. Possession saved, Feliciano walked. That was beautiful ball movement, I will say, by Penn State Hazleton. They've been making every correct pass. And Ashley James off camera is going to require some attention quickly. And so as a result, Jenny Rivera will sub back in. Looks to be something on her wrist. Nah, I think a contact fell out. Oh. That's not good. That's why I just wear the glasses. <laughs> Here's Lehigh Valley back in possession on offense. Toretta Crozier. Penn State, they have alleys trying to just slow it down, too. That's something you don't see every day. The ball touched everyone's hands on that possession, and Sage Christopher's got two. So Hazelton down four, their largest deficit of the first quarter. Can they find an answer and stay close? Rocky Curry. Too strong. Crozier the rebound, and now Lehigh Valley is starting to settle in. Newman working her way through her own teammates. Columna to Toretta. Crozier, they've done this play about the last three or four possessions. But this time, Christopher gives it to Newman. Razzle-dazzle, but it won't fall. Christopher in there battling. Had it partially blocked and then fell short. Feliciano, good crossover. Now a dish. Bernazau's floater bounces around, won't fall. Lehigh Valley the other way. They're taking smart shots, Penn State Hazelton. They just aren't dropping. 92 seconds left in the first quarter. And there's a steal, Azaria Johnson. MVP for Hazelton so far. She's looking to go coast to coast, and she does. Toretta wanted a charge, didn't get it. I think there was more so a Euro step before she fell, so. I Toretta down here for three, won't go. Over the back against Columna, and to Hazelton it goes. We're going to see a mass substitution here for Penn State, Lehigh Valley. And a mass sub for Hazleton. Their two available yeah. subs are both in. But for Penn State, Hazleton, when I talked to uh, their head coach, 
uh, Anushko, he told me that they're a program that is definitely going to be a lot bigger than seven players next season. So definitely a team on the rise. For them to be in the playoffs is a big achievement for them and a good building block for years to come. But right now it's Justine Bernazau. Throws it inside to Rocky Curry, who's going to body with Nia Newman. And she's going to get it and get two. Tie game. That looked like a mismatch to me that Penn State Lehigh Valley didn't like. Here's Nia Newman. Now Raina Young on the drive with her left. Throws it across. That's tapped up into the air and out of bounds. She should have tried to catch it with two. Talk about the mismatch at the other end with Curry and Newman. But the thing is, is Curry is playing. She's right now. She's playing the center position in the middle on defense, but she's the point guard on offense. So it's really hard to cover that. Absolutely. Here's Mobley. Chanel Lee will try a deep two. It just rolled off. Young battling for it. So is Newman. There's a foul, and it'll stay here with 18.4 on the clock. Just a side note here, Azaria Johnson for Penn State Hazleton is getting checked out on the sideline for what looks to be an ankle injury. So we'll see how she does for the rest of the night. She's been a big factor in this first quarter on both ends. Here are the Newman sisters. Nyla. Picked up her dribble, she's got to do something. Her sister's there to help. Raina Young, now to Mobley, fired back to Nyla. To Nia Newman for three at the buzzer, just too strong. And at the end of the first quarter, Penn State Hazleton 12, Penn State Lehigh Valley 12. Playoff bas basketball in Stabler Arena back on the other side of this. St. Luke's Orthopedic Care. Extraordinary care in motion. St. Luke's knows that trust is the foundation of all relationships. It's earned over time. It's the type of relationship you should have with your healthcare team. While our healthcare needs are different, one thing is constant. St. Luke's is focused on building a lasting relationship with you, earning your trust and putting your well being first. When it comes to great health care, trust is essential. St. Luke's, the care you trust, now more than ever. All right, and welcome back here inside Stable Arena. I'm Joey Draper, joined by Tyler Carbon. Tied after quarter one. That's a win in Hazleton's book. And for Lehigh Valley, they've got a lot to improve on. But that's a great start with an and one from Gabby Giracello. Gabby Giracello attacking the basket and simply just getting the tough end one. But as you said at the beginning of the quarter, uh, it was really good for Penn State Hazleton as this is where they want to be in this situation. And, uh, but Penn State Lehigh Valley off to a great start. For Giracello, she'll get one look at the foul line here. And she's too strong. She tried to get her own miss. It's going to fall into the hands of Ashley James. And then she's able to get some help. Lots of calls not being called. Yeah. Here's Hazleton with Rivera. Now it works its way to Bernazau. A little floater! As Penn State, Hazleton's tied it up. But it's going to be a tough one here for the rest of the way. That was a real good fadeaway from Bernazau. Columna to the inside, swatted away, and saved by Curry. No, it wasn't. It'll stay with Lehigh Valley. That one, if you're Curry, you don't really want to save that one. Especially, what I was always taught is when you're down at that end, if it's going out towards the baseline, let it go, because you don't want to dish it in and then give it to someone right underneath their own hoop. Absolutely. 20 to shoot for Lehigh Valley. Here's Gabby G. She wants to drive. She'll throw it across the court to Toretta. Columna, we're under 10 to shoot now. Giracello, just his last drive, wouldn't work this time. It bounces to Crozier. Columna, Toretta. Everyone's getting a touch. 12 to shoot. Got to go to work soon. 
Toretta, Giracello. Are they aware that the shot clock is at five? I don't think they are. Giracello, she throws it up. Oh, wow. I think she was aware, Joey. She said a prayer and it went in. That was pretty from Giracello. Now a steal from Giracello. This quarter is hers so far, and she draws a blocking foul now. This has been a great start for not just Penn State Valley, but Gabby Giracello, as she has been <laughs> red hot so far in this minute 20 in. Penn State Hazleton's going to take a timeout as Gabby Giracello is a little too hot for their liking to start quarter two. Yeah, I mean, I think it's kind of a smart timeout. I mean, the thing is, is you obviously want to stop it before they get it too far ahead because, you know, as we see here, Penn State Levi is going to get the ball back at, but they've been doing excellent so far, Penn State Hazleton, in my opinion, uh, keeping up with Penn State Lehigh Valley. Absolutely. Coach Anushka has got to be really pleased. And, I mean, this was the exact. This is literally the exact same basketball game that Derek and I saw a couple of weeks ago. It's just in that fourth quarter, Lehigh Valley found their groove, and Penn State Hazleton was just so gassed because they worked so hard in the first three quarters. As we see Johnson checking in, in it looks like for Penn State Hazleton, which is a good sign to see. At the next horn, she'll be in. As it's been a great start for her. Here's Lyric Reyes with the ball now to Ja Oliver. And Chanel Lee's been quiet, but she'll try to get going. But now it's with Oliver to Christopher, who's had a good start. That one's off. She got her own rebound and knocked her own teammate down. Live action, folks. 15 to shoot. Here's Giracello on the drive. Lee, Oliver, throws it back. Giracello dishes. That was a pretty possession, and it finishes with a Chanel Lee, too. And now it's a turnover on the inbound thrown right away. It seems as if, like, Penn State Lehigh Valley doesn't want to take the three-point shot because on the last possession they had what seemed to be, like, four three-point opportunities there. But instead, they just kept attacking the basket. I mean, they got two at the end, but it seems like they just don't want to shoot the ball. 29% from three this season. Have yet to shoot one this evening. And that effort is no good. And here's Azaria Johnson. You mentioned she was checking back in. Here she is. Now Rocky Curry. Bernazal. Cassandra Rodriguez for three. And if she gets hot, you're in trouble. I was going to say, she seemed like a little bit quiet in the beginning as Johnson and Curry were taking the workload there, but if she gets involved, Penn State Lehigh Valley's gonna have to watch out. Here's Lyric Reyes, that bounces off and the rebound to Hazleton. And they're gonna seek the lead if they can score on this next trip down. Here's Azaria Johnson, couldn't catch it. Oliver's battling for it and ends up with Chanel Lee. And Chanel Lee's just going coast to coast. Takes it all the way, but it bounces. Christopher gets her own miss and then it's followed, Giracello, Oliver, and it goes back to Hazleton. This is playoff basketball. It's been great basketball, it seems like, so far. Very aggressive, I like the way it's going. Very up and down game, and uh, it's gonna be a good one, I think, so far for the rest of this. Definitely one that neutrals will enjoy. It's a one point lead for Lehigh Valley right now as we have seven minutes to go in the first half. Here's Bernazal. She's from France originally, but making herself quite at home in a Penn State Hazleton shirt. She's gonna go to work on Lyric Reyes. Zaria Johnson to Rocky Curry. And Curry had a good first quarter. She has yet to score in the second. That was a good defensive trip by Lehigh Valley and Sage Christopher. Here they come in transition with Chanel Lee, and that's a good bucket. Great job by Paige Christopher at the other end. Textbook defense and great finisher by Chanel Lee. She didn't leave her feet, which allowed her to just have the block, but Azaria Johnson gets past her and scores. And one point ball game still. Penn State Lehigh Valley scores, Hazleton scores. Back and forth action. Here's Chanel Lee again. Gets the roll, and she's starting to get going. The thing is, if both, both teams, their baskets, they're, they're working for them. You have to earn your baskets in these games, and uh, 
as we see a steal here by Penn State Lehigh Valley. And Ja Oliver goes up wildly. It wouldn't go. Toretta, Christopher rolled off, tapped out. Lee is there for the moment. And a walk. <laughs> And the next line change for Penn State Lehigh Valley. Newman sisters check in. The height comes in. It's, it's such a good thing to have if you're a basketball team. Coach Khalil trying different lineups tonight, seeing which one is going to be able to find that groove that builds the lead for Lehigh Valley. Right now, each lineup has been equally faced by Hazleton, but Newman getting aggressive there on Azaria Johnson and a little too aggressive as she's called for a foul. Just the first on Nyla Newman, so nothing to be too concerned about from a Lehigh Valley perspective. That's the other thing about this gym is they don't have fouls anywhere, so it's just so hard to see like what the foul situation's like. And try to listen to the PA announcer when he calls it. Rocky Curry can't get the bounce on that one. Here is Kaya Mobley. Oh, behind the back. Mobley's going to work all the way, and she's fouled. Two shots coming. She was the player of the game the last time these two met, and she's trying to take over again. Yeah, great move, honestly, as we take another look at it. This behind the back move was silky smooth, and then she just attacks the basket, because once you make a move like that, you know, you gotta finish it. So in order to make it like a highlight reel type of tape, as she's at the line to shoot. Sean approves as he gave us that rebound or replay, excuse me, and the first is good by Kaya Mobley. One of two, that trip down. Curry fought for the rebound. Now she has four bodies on her, but she's able to get it to Azaria Johnson, who shakes away. Rodriguez for three. That's her second of the quarter. They needed that. They, they were a little quiet on the offensive end, and that three just woke everybody up. Look out. They're within one again, and Cassandra Rodriguez, not a single point in the first quarter. She's got six here in quarter number two. Good dish inside there, but Rainey Young couldn't do anything with it. Nyla Newman, she is fouled and two shots coming. And one thing with only seven players, you don't want to get into foul trouble. You just took the words right out of my mouth. I was going to say that Penn State Hazleton just has to watch the fouls a little bit, only having seven players. As Kyla Newman, yeah, it's just a clean hack right at her, right at her arm. So two shots here. For Nyla Newman, she's been... A great aggressive person for Penn State Lehigh Valley this season, and she gets the first there. She's always trying to get a steal and always driving underneath the basket. She does a great job to earn every point she scores. That second free throw is left short. Lehigh Valley's gone one of two every trip down. I was going to say, that's something you got to keep an eye on. Here's Ashley James. Rejected. Crozier got a piece of it. Now here's Nia Newman. Ahead to Nyla Newman. Now it's with Rainey Young, and she took a big hit, and I believe that's going to be on the floor. We'll find out. Penn State Hazleton just it seems like they're getting a little banged up. It feels like at both ends as Ashley James was running down the floor with a little bit of a limp. So it's just, it stinks only having seven players. I will say that. And it actually was a shooting foul. Penn State Lehigh Valley in the bonus now, but the first is no good by Rainey Young. One of two again for Penn State Lehigh Valley. Their lead is back up to three. Rivera took her eye off the ball. Lucky that that possession is still with them. Here's Rodriguez inside, Azaria Johnson against Crozier. Left it inside, Rivera wouldn't fall. Here's Kaya Mobley, good bounce pass in between the defenders. Nyla Newman now, Crozier, walk. And with every turnover, that's another head shake from Coach Lori Khalil. I'll say one thing, these Hazleton fans, they travel well. Yeah. They are rowdy in this gym right now. They're doing a good job at trying to give the best possible home court advantage to Hazleton. As <laughs> Penn State Lehigh Valley only had four players out on the floor. Penn State Lehigh Valley struggling to get organized. 
Oh, and now numbers. Christopher, she's not going to get there. Ashley James. It rolled out. That can't happen from a Hazelton perspective. Here's Giracello inside. Columna, oh, one touch pass. Finish, Toretta. That's just rough. Penn State Hazelton had two players out at the other end, and when Penn State they have Alex these numbers. Oh my God. The steal, Giracello left it short, though, and these layups are getting left short for both teams, and now a foul against Lehigh Valley. Rough couple, rough minute there, I'd say, for Penn State Hazelton. Thrown up, and here we go. They've tried that once before. It's worked both times, and they get two out of it. Good job there from Natasha Feliciano. Now you just got to get back as quick as you can. Giracello draws a foul, and to the line they go. Now the Lehigh Valley fans have their chess match going on with the Hazleton fans. Yeah, just attacking it, but... As the fan said behind me, you got to quit fouling because you're in a tough situation here for the second half. They are right in the first row and are really good to have right behind us. It's a good entertaining piece for when the b basketball game is not being played. Here's Gabby G. She's one of two at the line so far tonight. Bounces around and rolls off. Is there something wrong with the rims at both ends? It seems like any time the ball is hanging up there, it just won't fall in. The Penn State Lehigh Valley is just struggling with uh, the free throws. 0 oh for 2 from Gabby G, and it stays in one possession game. There's a steal. She can't make the free throws, but she can steal and score the layups. Either way, it's two points for Gabby G and Penn State Lehigh Valley. Here comes Azaria Johnson, now the deficit five. Oh, is this her third three of the quarter? Not that time, Cassandra Rodriguez, a follow up and one. Rocky Curry taking it into her own hands. Great job, great hustle to get down to the, end of the other end of the floor. As we take a look here, Rodriguez's three does not fall, but Curry, just you see her just blaring down the court, gets that ball, goes up with it and gets the end one. Cannot convert the free throw. Both teams struggling from what is usually the nice part of the basketball court. Columna, floater, good. And now Bernazal looking to go. She's stopped by a double team. Throws it away. Lehigh Valley's defense is waking up. I give that to the Penn State Lehigh Valley bench. They were the extra defender on that one. Defense feeds the offense. Coach Khalil's got a big poster of those words in her office, and on the other side of this timeout, we'll see if their most recent defensive performance will feed the offense. Yeah, I mean, it's been, it's been, you know what it kind of reminds me of for Penn State Hazleton? It kind of reminds me of the whole Penn State Lehigh Valley men's team. How, like, they get close, and then it stretches out, gets close, stretches out, and right now that's what the kind of the rhythm they're in. And they just got to be able to just punch through at some point and make the easy shots. Hazelton battled the entire way the first time these two met. They're battling here tonight, but they have gotten a little bit sloppy the last minute or two, and they need to find their groove back. And it's not going to get any easier. There you are starting on defense in a couple seconds, and a three would stretch this lead to eight. But Lehigh Valley has yet to make a three tonight. Haven't really tried one either. They've been going to the inside, so maybe that's something Coach Khalil saw in a film session that it would better suit them to play in the paint. Oliver to Chanel Lee. Threw it up, was looking for some contact, wouldn't get it, so a good stop out of the timeout by the visitors. And here's Rocky Curry thrown forward. Toretta nearly got to it. And that ball is flying into our area. Good catch by our producer, Sean. And Man, give him his Jordans. Put him in. Yeah. Put him in. I wish we had a replay of that. So do I. Here's the inbound to Azaria Johnson. She'll drive at Oliver and score easily. Hazleton's got to keep feeding Azaria Johnson because she's been able to 
be that X factor for them so far today. She nearly got a steal there. Lyric Reyes is able to collect the possession. 18 to shoot with Reyes again. Now Oliver. Lots of movement without the ball by the Lehigh Valley Lions. Five to shoot, Chanel Lee short. Christopher is in there battling, goes up and one! The senior flex on him. What a finish by Sage Christopher. I thought they were gonna call a jump ball here for a little bit there, but then she went up strong with it and got the end one. And see, right there I was expecting a jump ball call to be called, but instead it was a foul. Gets the roll and the lead is six for the hosts. And the game started off with no calls and now Penn State Hazleton's getting called for everything. And now here's a steal. Toretta, Oliver for two, it whirled off. Lee tries again and scores. And the lead's up to eight and Lehigh Valley is starting to find their momentum. Penn State Hazleton just has to finish this quarter strong because they can catch their breath in the locker room at halftime. Rodriguez, this is a good look Ooh. and it's good. Rodriguez with nine in the quarter. They've all been threes. That's exactly what you want, though, going into halftime in the situation you're in. Here's Oliver. Toretta. And it works its way all the way into underneath with Lee. Out of bounds to Hazleton. So after the stretch where they weren't able to get anything, a Cassandra Rodriguez three makes it within five. Now they get a stop, and down the court they go. Hold everything. They got to get across first. And they're running close to 10 seconds. Won't be able to, they do get it across. Feliciano to Bernazal, 15 to shoot. Azaria Johnson to the inside, that bounces. Azaria Johnson blocked, it'll stay here with eight to shoot. Be aware, be aware of the shot clock here for Penn State Hazleton, but honestly, I kind of like the idea of running down the shot clock a little bit. Just trying to get, to get you to halftime quicker. The fewer possessions for Lehigh Valley, the better. What an inbound, Azaria Johnson, and one! I hope she's okay though, because that the way her leg folded up looked a little scary here as we take a look. That was quick as can be. It was. Johnson with a nice little backdoor using a screen, but the way her, right there, ooh. The way the leg folded up was a little scary, but she looks fine. She's been their MVP in this first half. It would not go. The rebound is saved, and now Hazleton can grab the lead with a triple. Here's Rodriguez. Curry. Oh, yeah. Driving. Curry. Oh, she went too far underneath, and Christopher stood her ground. Here comes Lehigh Valley. Oliver, offensive foul. And correct me, I didn't look at the scoreboard correctly. They can tie with a three. I still don't know what the foul was. Did you see what it was? They called it an offensive foul. Yeah, I saw the offensive foul. I just wasn't. All right, Penn State Hills the ball. Here's a baseball pass. Can Johnson catch up to it? Yes. And she's fouled by Crozier. And I don't like that foul. They were on the baseline, and she looked like she was staying in just by the skin of her teeth. Hey, I'll tell you one thing. If she just had, if she put her hands up, that would have been an absolute beautiful ball, like pass. Azaria Johnson now at Hazleton in the bonus will get to go to the line. So that Crozier foul gives an opportunity to catch their breath in for Hazleton. Get in on that deficit. First is short. And free throws continue to be the gloom of this first half. For both teams. Yeah, neither side's been able to find the bucket. That one hung on there forever, but falls in for Johnson, and they're within two now. Here's Mobley. Nia Newman on the drive, rolls it up, and it bounced off. Offensive rebound, Newman tries again and scores. Follow your shot and get rewarded. And now the last 15 seconds of this first half, Feliciano to Johnson. Feliciano again inside the line, that deep two is good. But Lehigh Valley's got time to come down the court. Here is Nyla Newman. 
Throws it to the corner. Nia Newman for three. Well short. Crozier, that won't count. And at the half, it's Penn State Lehigh Valley 38, Penn State Hazleton 36. It's everything you could ask for in a playoff basketball game. It's, ap it's honestly kind of amazing to watch, it feels like, because this game has just been so back and forth, and when it feels like one team's pulling away. Uh, 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 you can't get away that quick, so other team's right back in it. Absolutely, and this is a bread and butter game for Lehigh Valley that they just have to find their rhythm again. It's their form. And now to Derek. As I'm down here, Coach Khalil. Coach, overall thoughts of the first half? Well, I think Hazleton is playing amazing. Like, they're, they're keeping up with our pace. Um, it's a great game. I mean, we, we, gotta, we gotta tighten up our half court defense. What are you gonna tell your team to survive in advance? In the uh, we need to stop the penetration going to the basket and know where number 10 is. Thanks, Coach. Good luck in the second half. Guys, back to you. All right, Derek, thank you. We're going to take a quick break, and then I'm going to have Rich Fatzinger here in a couple minutes. And right now, it's Penn State Lehigh Valley up by two at the half in the quarterfinals of the Penn State University Athletic Conference quarterfinal. St. Luke's knows that trust is the foundation of all relationships. It's earned over time. It's the type of relationship you should have with your healthcare team. While our healthcare needs are different, one thing is constant. St. Luke's is focused on building a lasting relationship with you, earning your trust and putting your well-being first. When it comes to great health care, trust is essential. St. Luke's, the care you trust, now more than ever. Do you suffer from nagging neck or back pain? The St. Luke's Comprehensive Spine Program can get you better, faster. We're easy to access and don't require a referral. We'll call you discuss your symptoms, and put you on a path to healing with the most appropriate provider. Call 1-866-ST-LUKES, option 6, or fill out the online form. Interested in a medical career? Consider St. Luke's if you want to be a doctor or a nurse. Based in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, we are the area's only four-year medical school and the largest provider of medical residencies and fellowships, and the country's longest-running school of nursing. Train at an organization that is nationally recognized in education, patient care, and quality. See why we are ranked the nation's number one teaching hospital. Where you train matters. The best doctors and nurses train at the best hospitals. St. Luke's University Health Network. Network. All right, and welcome back inside Stable Arena. I'm Joey Draper, joined by Penn State Lehigh Valley Athletic Director Rich Fatzinger. Rich, we always like talking to you at halftime, and you always are able to give us your input on the game. Well, right now it's a two-point lead, and Hazleton, they may be, you know, 13 and 10 and got blown out the first time these two met, played a little bit closer the second time, but they are right in the thick of things here tonight. Yeah, I think they're doing a really nice job of staying patient, even when things are going against them a little bit. Uh, offensively, they're moving the ball real well. Um, once they get by the pressure, they seem to be okay, and they haven't been hurt significantly by the pressure. Offensively for us, you know, when we're getting some easy easy looks, that's that's an advantage for us. I think our, we're getting a lot of second shots, too, inside the paint, which is a good thing. Lori and this Penn State Lehigh Valley team are not used to normally being in close games. They do a great job at getting out to a fast start and building a lead of, you know, 10 or 12 points, and then they're able to sustain it. So in a game like this where Hazleton's had the lead and now Lehigh Valley has only a two-point lead, how does Coach Khalil get them to build on this in the second half? Well, one of the things that happens at the end of the season is teams get better, and they start realizing what it is that makes someone else successful or the match that they have with that particular team. So, you know, this is an example where, you know, Hazleton's made some adjustments. I, I think they have, like you said, decreased the spread the first game to the second and now the third. So it's a matter of us making the proper adjustments. And maybe the press isn't going to be the answer tonight. It might be a thing of we just have to execute better offensively in the half court. If we do that, then you can slowly get the, get the lead rather than, you know, it's a quick hit and run. Right, and for Penn State Lehigh Valley, overall, the last couple of seasons, they've been superb. They won it the uh, entire conference back in 2018-19, and they've made the playoffs every year under Lori, I believe. And just talk about the sustained success that Coach Khalil has been able to implement into this program and another year in the quarterfinals and a half away from the semifinals. Yeah, she's a, she's a phenomenal recruiter. I mean, she, you see every team that we play, 
she's got 14, 15 kids sitting on the bench and other teams have seven, eight, nine. And, and that's to her advantage because she then uses her pressure and wears teams down. Um, the, the piece that eventually it gets to is, you know, she's winning a lot of games. We want to get to the end of the season and, and win the championships. And I know that's her goal and that's the objective of our program right now. Right, and for Penn State Leah Valley this season, the two seed, and this is the last home game for us. You have, if we do win, we have to go out to Beaver. So talk about the road atmosphere versus having a home game in the playoffs. Obviously, Hazleton's traveled pretty well tonight, but for Penn State Lehigh Valley, playing on a familiar court versus having to go out to Beaver if they are to win tonight. Well, uh, Lori referred to this as uh, ground, Greyhound Groundhog Day <laughs> um, because of the fact that this is about the third, fourth time that we've done this. That, you know, we end up that we have to go out to, to play Beaver. Beaver's a really good team. They're well coached. Um, and we play a very similar style. It's both up tempo. They like to press. Um, so Beaver's, Beaver's her nemesis right now. And if she can get by them, then she looks like she's going to probably have uh, Schuylkill. So she's got a tough road. But... I'm really confident that she'll make the adjustments necessary. The kids will play hard and will be successful. And for the men's team, they unfortunately saw their season come to an end today, but they had a good season. They were very good, and they're definitely a program on the rise. So just talk about what Coach Edwards has built and the foundation he has spread out for the next season and maybe the next year on as well. Well, one of the things with the men's program is we have to get more consistent. We have to have the roster stay consistent. Um, we have to, you know just basically be more consistent all across the board. And, and I think that's happening. We just have to make sure we can make the right tweaks where we have to make them. Penn State Lehigh Valley Athletics, you've talked about them. That when you first started here, we only had a couple sports, and now we've grown it to adding a couple more each season. What are some things going on behind the scenes in your office that you're doing on the daily to try to make Penn State Lehigh Valley Athletics as good as the other Penn State schools like Brandywine or like Fayette or uh, the other campuses? Well, we're working with uh, admissions, and admissions has been uh, running some events with us to get recruits to come in, get some parents to come in to see our, our soccer coaches had an event the other day that they had like 35 people that were there to basically see our campus, see what we, what we have to offer, and most importantly, to meet our coaches. I think that's our, our success of where it is. We don't have a whole lot more to offer except we have great coaches who really take care of the kids and we have a, a staff and, and, and faculty that, that care about kids and they want these kids to be successful. And that's, that's what I think is what we can sell. And if someone wants to come here and continue to play their sport, but at the same time have a positive experience with their teammates, with their coaches, with the faculty, this is the place to come. And I remember back in the fall when Penn State soccer for us at Lehigh Valley was about to board the bus for uh, their trip out to State College for their championship game. Coach Mamari said something that has really stuck with me throughout there. He said, we may be the smallest campus of them all, but he said that we have the biggest hearts. So just talk about how each individual at Penn State Lehigh Valley, because I know a lot of individuals' names already, and I'm only a freshman. It seems like everyone knows each other when they're walking through the halls. So talk about how important that is to someone who is a freshman and trying to just get to know things, if, especially if they're from out of state. Well, I think that's the key for our success is the we do get some kids from out of state but they'll live together and, and the coaches really do a good job of having, having the players connect with each other, not just on the basketball court or the soccer field, connect in just in general, whether it be they go out together, they hang out together, um, and they have a safety blanket with our coaches. Our, our coaches are, are there for them all the time and they really, really care about them. So I think that's, that's obviously our, our, our success. And for Penn State, Lehigh Valley coming up uh, in May, we have the golf outing. I know you and I have advertised that. We're going to advertise it again May 22nd. Uh, we talked just a second ago about building the foundation for the athletics and making them better. This d event does that. So just talk about what this event does for the Penn State Lehigh Valley Athletics. Yeah, so for example, today uh, both Le uh, the ba men's basketball as well as uh, the women's basketball had an extra game beyond our season. So when we budget, we budget pretty tight and we budget for our regular season. So any extra is, is we got to find money. 
So this golf tournament is designed to help us with that. So when we go out to, if hopefully after tonight's game, we go out to Beaver, it's a couple thousand dollars. Well, a couple more than a couple, but it's, <laughs> it's thousands of dollars. And we want to be able to have this fundraiser so that we have the money to be able to allow the kids to have a really positive experience. And, you know, that means not, you know, short changes. It's not like we're, we're eating steak or anything, but, right. <laughs> but they're, they're definitely being treated with respect for how hard they've worked. Absolutely. Well, maybe you'll buy someone a steak if they beat you in that golf <laughs> tournament on May 22nd. <laughs> for right now, thanks, Rich, for joining me in the booth. Hopefully the girls are able to pull it out in the second half and we get to move on to the semifinals. It's yeah. always a pleasure. It's been great working with you, pal. Thanks, Rich. All right. And now we're going to have a little special interview on the other side of this commercial break. Derek is going to interview uh, Tyler. So Tyler's out of the booth and onto the court. We'll see you on the other side. I believe that St. Luke's and our coaches are going to provide the safest and most comprehensive training environment that a student athlete would want. Hopefully they, they come to us and, and they leave and there's not another need to be filled. Your daughter or son's team can come to us and we provide it all. On the ground, go! The team atmosphere and the, the team that we have put together of sport performance coaches and athletic trainers is why parents should choose St. Luke's University Health Network for their sport performance needs. There's not another orthopedic group, sports medicine group, healthcare system in the country that has high level degree certified, years of experience. Bench hit thrust or floor, we know what block A is, and then let me get another group of seven. Certified athletic trainers and the performance coaches are assigned to schools and they are there and they are getting the teams and doing team training around sports schedules and, and, and the student activity schedules. That's primarily where it's done. We also have provide uh, training here, like at this facility. We provide a comprehensive training program that is the most up-to-date training advancements. It's the safest it can be. We got our AWOCs. Remember, good It's not about gimmicks. Our, our guys are all educated and have the science behind what they're doing, a rhyme or reason of what they're doing. And we have leadership that will make sure that we're going to provide the best service there is. We actually care about your kids. I'm focusing on getting my butt back and my chest up. People don't know how to use this stuff. And so you, you need someone to teach them. And to help them navigate it in a way that's gonna be productive, that's not gonna hurt them. They trust me to put together a workout and they're always asking questions about it, which is great. You know, I wanted them to have that trust that, you know, I'm gonna help them succeed on and off the court. Every coach, every parent, they, they want what's best for their student. Okay? They want what's gonna help them be the best version of themselves. And so that's what we can provide. I don't think there's anything in this area that can rival it. All right, and welcome back to Stable Arena. I'm Joey Draper, and alongside of me, Tyler Carlbon. And we are not going to have Derek interview Tyler. That was just a joke that I did not interpret as a joke. So apologies to any viewers who were on the edge of their seat for that. You're stuck with me now, but Tyler, just that like, first half. Just like Dax passes, it goes <laughs> right over your head. <laughs> oh, you finally got one. You finally got one. one How long did it take you to come up with that right one? On, right on the spot. <laughs> But anyway, this first half has been an entertaining one. A two-point lead for Penn State Lehigh Valley over Penn State Hazleton. You want to run through the first half stats for us? Yeah, Janelle Oliver having a really quiet first half, only having two points. And then Chanel Lee with eight. Uh, Nyla Newman only having one point. Samantha Columna with two. Uh, Gabby Garcello with eight. Kaya Mobley having a quiet night, only one point. And... Toretto is seven, which is actually a really good performance for her. Sage Christopher coming up big with six points. And if we look at the other side, Curry having 10 points. She's been having a great night working the paint down low. Johnson with 11. She leads the way for her team. And Rodriguez having nine points with three of them being three threes in the second quarter. Penn State Hazleton has really done a good job at staying with it. They fell down eight with like two minutes to go in that second quarter and wheeled their way back to only being down two. So, and that's something that Rich said in our halftime interview is Hazleton's good, done a good job at staying patient even when it wasn't working for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, I think Hazleton, 
honestly, if I was the coach, I'd just keep saying, keep doing what you're doing. And that'd probably be my message to them at halftime if I was the coach. Just keep doing what you're doing. I'd look at the seniors, and I'd give the corny coach a talk and be like, do you really want this? You know what I mean? Like, it's your last time. And so then, well, it's your last time in the playoffs. And so, like, that's the speech I would give. I mean, you also see, like, I'm not a coach, so that's probably why, because my <laughs> speeches wouldn't be good. But, no, nah, I think Penn State Hazleton's been having a, a great job. Pending board approval, Tyler Carlbot is going to be hired somewhere. Yeah, Hopefully I, far, far away from here. I don't want to ever hear that again. Hey, I'm a Wilson grad, and I just saw that the football position opened <laughs> up for head coach, and I'm thinking, like, hey, I could coach football if I need to. <laughs> What's Wilson's rival again? What is it? Notre Dame Notre Green Dame. Pond. Dame. That's what I thought. When Wilson steps out to play Notre Dame Green Pond, Tyler Carlbon is going to get him fired up by saying, go out and do it. Do you really want it? Yeah, I bet you that's what Coach Khalil saying right now to our squad. Coach Khalil, they've made the playoffs every season under her here at Penn State Lehigh Valley. And Rich reminded me that uh, Penn State Beaver, which would be the next opponent for Lehigh Valley if they were to win, is her kind of arch nemesis, for lack of a better word. She has struggled against them both in regular season and postseason across her coaching career. And if she can get a crack at them and have an opportunity for a game where if she wins, she goes to the championship game, that'll be one that she will definitely have circled on her calendar. Yeah, the Penn State Beaver game, they, they won that 65-62. Uh, really close game, so it's going to be close regardless. That was a game you and I did at Lafayette. Penn State Lehigh Valley was down the entire game until the end. I, I'm telling you, I feel like what gets Penn State Lehigh Valley out of tough situations is their depth. Most definitely. It helps when you dress 14 versus 7. But here is Penn State Hazleton to get things started here in the qu third quarter. And Chanel Lee has that one. And now it's with Giracello the other way for the ladies in white. And that one rolled off. She tried to use some English. It wouldn't work. Here's Rocky Curry. She's in double figures. Working on Sam Columna. And Sam Columna returning from an injury. She's missed the last couple of games. She's back. Now Rivera works it across. Bernazal, floater to tie. Good. Tied at 38. Great shot there. And honestly, just the confidence to take that shot. I feel like most people would have swung it around, but she took the confidence to take that shot. Chiracello hits the deck as she fed Oliver, and now it's bounced its way all the way around to Chanel Lee. She drives baseline. Oliver thought about the three. Floater instead won't go. Last touched by Chanel Lee and Hazelton with two defensive stands to start. This could be big here for Penn State Hazleton because the thing is, is it's a home game for Penn State Lehigh Valley, but the way the crowd sounds, it sounds like a Hazleton crowd. So if they can get the crowd in this game too, it's, it's going to be a good one. And the first row right behind us, I think, are the season ticket holders for Penn State Hazleton. They are very vocal tonight and trying to wheel their squad to an upset win. Here's Rocky Curry posting up Columna. Good <laughs> shot. Good fake as well. And the first lead for Hazleton since it was 2-0. Here's Giracello, floater short. We'll call that a pass, and Chanel Lee has it for two. Seeing very good work done on both ends of the court in the paint for both teams. Here's Azaria Johnson. Bernazau nearly walked. Here's Jenny Rivera. And she does walk. So 40-40, just about two minutes into the third quarter. It's a good start. Absolutely, it's been a great game the entire way and everything you could ask for if you're a neutral wanting to watch some Penn State University Athletic Conference playoff basketball. And there is the defense chance from the visiting Hazleton crowd. Columna gonna try and quiet them. She cannot. Sawyer can't get the board. And Hazelton will hunt the lead on this trip down. This is a big possession here for Hazelton. Cassandra Rodriguez had nine points in that second quarter, all threes. Now it's with Curry. And a foul away from the ball as that was James who hit the deck. Ashley James saw her in and out of the uh, five in the first half. Wow. 
And Lehigh Valley has brought some new faces in. As Hazelton squeezed it into a tight window there. Good job by Azaria Johnson to get that one. Curry now at the top of the foul line. She'll give it back to Azaria Johnson. Goes in amongst the trees. It won't fall. Somehow Rocky Curry came away with it. And then she is fouled and will shoot two. Rocky Curry's been doing an awesome job in the paint tonight. I, if, I, if I was a coach, here we go back to the coaching shoes, I would show her in the paint because what she's been doing in the paint tonight has been textbook. It's been perfect. Coach Talk 101. Hopefully it's only for one season. First is good from Rocky Curry. Rolls off. So I think everyone has gone one for two tonight at the foul line. It's been quite a rough night at the charity stripe. And correct me if I'm wrong, is this Penn State Hazleton's first lead, lead of the night? Uh, no, they had the lead a moment ago, and oh, they don't right. have it anymore. Gianna Toretta for three. Right. They, they led 2 nothing. They had the lead a moment ago, yeah. and Toretta with, I think, Lehigh Valley's only second three of the night has him back up two. Rodriguez has an answer. Not that time, though. Curry on the boards again. Crozier sent that back where it came from. Here's Oliver in transition. Goes all the way, banks it in, blocking foul. Two shots coming from the senior. As we take a look, Janelle Oliver just full steam down the floor. And yeah, she wasn't really outside the circle in the paint. And also her feet were shuffling a little bit there. So good call there. First good from Ja Oliver. Two for two from Ja Oliver. That is the first time tonight that someone has gone two for two at the foul line on either team. Which is impressive because, man, that first, uh, I mean, that second quarter, everyone was at the free throw line. The charity stripe has not been a big charity from these two tonight. Here's Ashley James. Now it works its way to Rocky Curry. Zaria Johnson rejected in this Lehigh Valley defense. He's having a good start to quarter number three. The bigs are coming up big down low for here in, this, in the third quarter. Sage Christopher, she doesn't score too much, but she is a great defensive body to have. That shot's no good, and there she is rebounding the ball. Here comes Toretta now with the fast break. Throws it ahead. Rainey Young couldn't hold on to it. And back to the other end of the court we go. Are we going to see that long full court pass? They've tried it twice tonight. They have it. And the referee thought that was a little too premature, and we will go right back and try it again. No full court pass this time. Just Bernazau dribbling her way through some traffic. Detours it over to Rocky Curry. Into the corner, Ashley James thought about it. And then that one is thrown well away from any anybody. You just don't want to force too much here for Penn State Hazleton. Lehigh Valley ball at the scorer's table almost getting to get a touch on it. Here's Ja Oliver. Raina Young. Dribbles with her left, into the corner. Oliver thought about it, Toretta, she'll think about it, she'll shoot it, rolled out. Rainey Young hustling to save it. Christopher Toretta, 15 to shoot. Oliver for three, short. Rebound to James, thrown ahead, and now Cassandra Rodriguez is running. Help is arriving. Bernazau, James steps into it for three. Too strong, rebound Curry. Jump ball, possession to Lehigh Valley. I will say one thing though about Penn State Lehigh Valley, I'm not sure if it's because I'm used to them scoring close to 100 points every game, but just 
tonight it seems like everyone on the offensive side, except for I think one or two, has just been quiet. It feels like they've just been quiet. But um, I think that's something that like I don't really know where I was going with that. But it just seems like they've been quiet. That's Coach Talk 101 again, isn't it? Yes. Here's Chanel Lee banking it in for two. And here is the long court pass. And Chanel Lee, oh, she almost took it. Instead, it's Cassandra Rodriguez. And she will go to the line for two. And free throws are going to come up big here for Penn State Hazleton if they want to chip away at this. As we see the Hail Mary pass down the floor. And Rodriguez just fouled. Seemed like she got bumped a little bit there to go to the line to shoot two. Cassandra Rodriguez looking to get into double figures. Pure with the first, and she's got 10 now. Two for two for Cassandra Rodriguez. Hazelton within four again. It is win or go home time. As we near the month of March, here is Newman. That rolled off. Good stop from the Hazleton defense. Rocky Curry puts the brakes on. What a pass that was, but didn't have the composure. Here's Nyla Newman going all the way. Now to her sister. Raina Young bounces around, won't go. Nyla Newman ends up with it and scores. And Hazelton looks gassed. Rocky Curry just took a big exhale as she went to inbound it. That's the thing is you gotta control the tempo if you're Hazelton. This up and down game that Lehigh Valley loves is the enemy to a team that's only dressing seven ladies. Here's Rocky Curry. Feliciano back to Curry. Curry. That is nothing. These officials have let him play for the most part tonight. Young, bodies hitting the deck everywhere. Nyla Newman's gonna find herself open again and well off the mark that time and now a foul is called. I think this from this moment on is where we start to see uh, Penn State Lehigh Valley kind of pull ahead a little bit. Because we look, Penn State Hazleton, they have players Hands on knees, they look gassed, but heads are down. You look across the court, and here comes five fresh legs for Penn State Lehigh Valley. Now, full court press from Lehigh Valley, but Azaria Johnson breaks it. Azaria Johnson, Cassandra Rodriguez, three rolled out. She's usually super reliable. Giracella was out of bounds when she gathered that rebound. 3.39 to go in the third quarter, still within striking distance, but got to get one in the hoop soon. Yeah, they needed that Rodriguez three big there. Uh, put them down six, if she, I mean down three if she would have made that. Feliciano, foot was on the line. That's a deep two. Here's Ja Oliver now. With Penn State Lehigh Valley leading by four. Giracella with a nice crossover and she is fouled. And one thing I've noticed is that Coach Anushko is not complaining about the foul calls like the fans are behind us. So that tells you that these fouls are actually fouls. Yeah, as we see here. Oliver right off the inbound, short. Giracello. Doing everything to keep this possession alive. Now it's with Lyric Reyes. Her floater is short. She tries to save it, cannot. And the other way we go. As Curry's doing a great job trying to get her team back into it. And for Penn State Lehigh Valley, this will be their final home game of the season. As their next game, if they win, will be at Beaver. And and one for Azaria Johnson going coast to coast. Can bring them within one. And this, this is big here. As we take a look here, Johnson catches it and just zoom. Takes, literally, coast to coast. No stopping her. A Porsche with no brakes there. And now the and one for Azaria Johnson if she can knock it down. She can. Oh, excuse me, they're not gonna count the, 
bucket. I'm not sure where the miscommunication was, but they're letting her shoot two. And she gets them both. So they're down by two, it's 49-47. I did not understand why that was not a good bucket and one, but the referees seem to have a better idea than I do. Either way, Lehigh Valley still up by two, three minutes to go in the third. Giracello, Reyes. Oliver, they're going back and forth. Sawyer, Crozier arriving for two. Great cut there. You saw the lane and absolutely took advantage of it. Moving without the ball, key to success. Feliciano now, two and a half to go. Third quarter, PSUAC quarterfinals. Three on the way from James is no good. Rebound fought for, Oliver's got it, and here we go, off to the races this way. Oliver, Giracello, the scoop wouldn't go. Still loose, out of bounds, it'll stay here. As James took a tough fall there at the end of that play. Energy and effort. Lori Khalil's favorite words. There's a quick inbounds pass, Chanel Lee. Was fouled going up and two shots coming for Penn State Lehigh Valley's number three. As it looks like kind of Chanel Lee just walked right in and caught the ball and went up. Not much of a, a challenge there for her. She has the height differential. The first for Chanel Lee is on the way and short. Free throws are very important. I feel like if you were to ask them their percentage for tonight, it literally would just be 50%. 0 for 2 that time for Lee. Azaria Johnson hit the deck. Again, the ref's letting him play. Jump ball. It'll go to Hazleton because of the possession arrow. But a 51-47 lead for Lehigh Valley. Hazleton would certainly take this as a win. But now they gotta try to find their offensive rhythm again. Nice move there. And here comes Azaria Johnson. Numbers favor the ladies in blue. Three on the way is gonna be ending up short. Johnson gets it back, left it short again. Christopher the board. She is getting put through the ringer and a foul is called and the other way we go. And that was a Rather uncharacteristic miss from three for Cassandra Rodriguez. Uh, it felt like kind of a frustration foul there from Johnson. As she had the, the look there for two, and it just didn't fall and landed in the hands of Sage Christopher. And she took it out on her. Yeah. Here's Columna to the inside. Lee is going right back to the foul line. She was 0 for 2 last trip. Let's see what happens here, but a replay first. Yeah, Chanel Lee just fouled at the lower box. And she misses the first. She's missed her last three. Misses her last four. Here comes Azaria Johnson. Into the corner, three on the way. Rodriguez, air ball, followed up, nothing there. Chanel Lee, Ja Oliver now, into the corner. Toretta thought about it. 117 to go in the third. This could go either way. Here's Oliver on the drive. Scoop layup and scores! Biggest bucket of the night from a Penn State Lehigh Valley perspective. Ja Oliver's been quiet, it felt like, for the most of the night, but she's really been coming alive here in the third quarter. Feliciano gets rid of Columna. Now attracts a triple team. Somehow finds Jenny Rivera. Rolled off. Kept alive. Azaria Johnson, three from Feliciano. And Hazelton takes a timeout as they're within three with 47 seconds to go in the third quarter. That was big. Absolutely it was. And 
certainly got the crowd fired up. But uh, <laughs> normally it would be the other team calling the timeout here. But Hazleton calls it, catch their breath here, and finish strong with 47 seconds on the clock in the third quarter. There is no quit in this Penn State Hazleton club. Absolutely none. They've been f fighting all day, and uh, it's been paying off for them. For Penn State Lehigh Valley, we said before the game that if Hazleton could keep them within 50 to 60 points, that this would be a game that Hazleton likes. Penn State Lehigh Valley averages 86 a game, and that used to even be higher. So this is definitely not where they want to be playing. Absolutely not. I remember when we were doing a game at Lafayette, and Coach Khalil told me her philosophy of 25 points a quarter. And... Uh, I mean, maybe they were going for 25 points a half today just yeah, to get to where they're at right now. They've gone a little bit less than that the last couple weeks. But that's what this long season can do for you. I mean, you play. They've, this is their 26th game of the year. They're not as fresh as they were back when we first started covering them in November. So definitely that end-of-year fatigue. But I would think the adrenaline of possibility season on the line would feed him. Here's Ja Oliver. This could be her last game in a Penn State Lehigh Valley shirt. She's gonna try to keep them going. Here's Columna, 12 to shoot. Oliver, Toretta in the corner, she's doubled. Columna, five to shoot. Underneath, nearly thrown away. It is thrown away, and Hazleton will get the last possession of the third quarter if they play their cards right. Schnell Lee's been having a rough third quarter. And uh, it's certainly going to come to her turning it back on in the fourth for them to come out on top. She's such a huge player for this Penn State Lehigh Valley team. Rivera, she's got 10 seconds to get over. She just does. And she walked. The pressure from Toretta will give Lehigh Valley the ball back with seven seconds to shoot here in the third quarter. This has to be a good possession from Lehigh Valley. They need to have that little ounce of momentum going to the fourth. Here's Toretta. She's gonna shoot a three most definitely. No, it's Columna, they gotta get something up. She was out of bounds to Hazleton. It goes with eight tenths of a second. So this end of the third quarter is very sloppy. Eight tenths of a second. We could have a Joe Allen beat up moment from last night. Here it comes, throwing it down court. Columna will touch it to end what has been a rough third quarter. Penn State Lehigh Valley is still in the lead. It's 53 to 50. The final 10 minutes to decide someone's season is after this. Hall of Fame pitcher Steve Carlton knows what it takes to exceed expectations. He knows what it means to be part of a team that rises above the competition. He knows a champion. Steve Carlton knows St. Luke's Orthopedic Care. At St. Luke's Orthopedic Care, you can trust us with your hands, feet, shoulders, hips, and knees. Because healthy bones and joints mean you can do more. You can trust us to recommend the right approach to care, including joint sparing treatments and therapies. And when surgery is the only choice, we offer options to help you heal faster, including technology-assisted joint replacements and muscle sparing hip surgery. St. Luke's, the orthopedic care you trust, now more than ever. All right, and welcome back here to Stabler Arena on the campus of Lehigh University, but we've got Penn State Lehigh Valley against Penn State Hazleton action here tonight, and we are headed to the final fourth quarter and 10 minutes of what could be someone's season. Penn State Lehigh Valley hanging on to a three-point lead, but Penn State Hazleton has been there for everything that Lehigh Valley has thrown at them so far tonight. Yeah, that's what we love about playoff basketball. It's there's the heart that's on the line, especially with the seasons on the line. There's just... There's effort that you've never seen before by both teams. It's Lehigh Valley with the first possession of the fourth and final quarter. And it's Raina Young, couldn't get it to fall. Rebound there for Hazleton. And trying to get out is Feliciano, she will. She's getting rid of everybody. Feliciano with the handles. And now they'll settle things down. 
16 to shoot. Azaria Johnson. Feliciano thought about it. Did not pull the trigger. Five to shoot. Ashley James to the inside. That's nearly stolen. Curry's got to force one up. Oh, it nearly fell. Here's Kaya Mobley. Nyla Newman now. Mobley. Here's a three on the way. Short. Tapped out. Feliciano. Oh, the ball rolled to the ground and it's stolen back. Nia Newman on the drive. Leaves it to her sister. Traveled first. And now Ashley James is down in some pain. But she is able to get back up. But this is a concern from Hazleton's perspective. She is going to be subbed out. As we do see her both of her legs taped up. Um, Shows you how much effort she puts in. It's Bernazau to check in for the visitors. Thrown in there, Bernazau had to come back and catch it. No time wasted though. And that one's poked free. Azaria Johnson can't save it. But Cassandra Rodriguez can. Curry over to Feliciano. Everybody has ended up on the court one way or another tonight. Trying to save every possession like it's their last. Feliciano to Johnson, six to shoot. She'll drive, Sh shoots, it rolled off. Same team continue to fight for it. Cassandra Rodriguez for the tie, too strong. And the ball is still loose. Newman has it, and here comes Penn State Lehigh Valley. Good shot selections there by Penn State Hazleton. Just wouldn't fall, Mobley deep two, too strong, saved by Newman, walked, and the other way we go. Man. This is a sloppy, sloppy game for both teams, but one that is gonna definitely be in one ear and out the other from Coach Khalil. She's gonna wanna forget about this one as soon as it ends. Hasn't been the prettiest. Bernazau now, Curry. Oh, that ball's unable to be handled and now Toretta's running the head, ahead to Giracello, back to Toretta, threw it up wildly, wow, how did that go in? Gianna Toretta just kind of threw it up in the air and it went. I think she was more so expecting a foul call and so she just threw it up, but no foul was called, but it landed, so. How in the world? Here's Azaria Johnson, she lost it. Curry, that is not a walk, but it's out of bounds anyway to Penn State Lehigh Valley. Here's Giracello, Toretta's open. Inside, Chanel Lee, rough third quarter. Good start to the fourth, and Penn State Lehigh Valley's up seven. Johnson, Rodriguez blocked! Lee, Rodriguez. And it's to Lehigh Valley. Timeout, Hazelton. Momentum shifting. Wow. That's good. This I is mean, this, this is good. this is what happened in the fourth quarter the last time these two met. Lehigh Valley found a way to get the momentum on their side and tired Hazelton out. Still seven minutes to go in a seven-point deficit, but. Definitely all those missed trips down by Hazleton in the last two minutes and 58 seconds could end up being costly ones. Yeah, well, the thing is with Hazleton is they just can't catch the ball. It's like they want it. They're moving too quick. Like their brain's going faster than their body is. A and lot of the balls have ended up on the court tonight for them. Yeah, it's like they just forget to catch the ball before they make their move. And so that's like really what's been hurting them in the past two minutes. But as we just heard from the Penn State Hazleton student section, they're it's good. It's not over. Yeah, it's not over. They're good. Seven minutes to play. The clock just starting. Maybe a second late. I didn't see anything. Here's Lyric Reyes over to Toretta. It bounces its way around. This has to be a solid possession for Lehigh Valley. Here's Chanel Lee. Scores! She missed four free throws in a row, turned the ball over a couple of times in the third quarter, but so far in the fourth, she's got a block and four points. But here's Azaria Johnson, quiets the crowd, and one! A late whistle, but it's still a whistle. 
And one more at the line for Azaria Johnson. Very delayed whistle, but I think it was the right call. When you look at it here, as Azaria Johnson's running down the floor, and yeah, Toretta just went, hits her and couldn't land. It's kind of like shooting a three-pointer, you know, all that fun stuff. Yeah. Your coaching one-on-one -on -one is spot on tonight, Tyler. They aren't calling it an N1, I don't think. That's on the floor, actually. So the second time today that the referees have... Well, they aren't changing the scoreboard either. Was it maybe a foul after the bucket went in? I don't know. Either way, Feliciano for three. It's a four-point game. The referees made it a little awkward, but Hazleton's within four. Giracello, nothing in that. Sawyer or went around the world. And a foul on the floor against Hazleton. I don't know what's happening tonight. I know. That's what. There's a lot going on. Here's Chanel Lee. She loses it. A foul first. <laughs> Leah Valley's going to end up in the bonus soon. And I'm sure Penn State Hazleton players have to be getting really close to foul trouble. Thrown into Lee. Now it's Uricello. Ten to shoot. Here's Lyric Reyes. Chanel Lee, nothing in that. She asked the referee, what was that? He said nothing. Here comes the other direction for Hazleton, Azaria Johnson. They're within two. And their fans are making noise here in Bethlehem. 5.44 to go. Edge of your seat stuff. Playoff basketball. Lee Wild won't go Sawyer. Taps it out to Reyes. Toretta for three. Blows the roof off Stabler and looks right at the Hazleton fans. And Penn State Lehigh Valley's up five. Wow, the confidence. The she confidence made to shoot the eye ball. contact. <laughs> the confidence to shoot the ball there. She's my player of the game for that. Right there. As you take a look here. Toretta pulls it. Bang, and she stares right at the student section and holds the three-pointer. <laughs> That's confidence right there. She made eye contact and said, this is my city. Still a five-point ball game, though. Five and a half minutes left. Got to settle ourselves, but that, <laughs> that was good. blew the roof off this place. Five and a half to go. Down by five. Hazleton... Out of the timeout, do they have a response for Gianna Turetta? Gotta get the ball in here. And Sage Christopher, who's done the dirty work tonight for Lehigh Valley, is gonna prevent that from being a clean inbound, but we'll do it again. And they get it in quicker this time. Rocky Curry was electrifying to watch in the first half. She's been very quiet in this second. And that ball whizzed its way around and ended up in the hands of Bernazau. She'll drive Toretta, kick it, Curry. Azaria Johnson, foul line extended, rolled off. Curry's battling, blocked. Azaria Johnson rescues it, foul called. It's the right call. It's the right call. I agree. It's the fourth personal foul. Here we go with Bernazau for Hazelton. Now Curry, under five to play. Feliciano lost it on the way up, Crozier. And here comes Toretta. Oh, she's got that confident look in her eyes again. She gives it up this time. Oliver, now with Toretta again. Leah Valley just taking time off the clock. They have the lead. Christopher floater rolled off, tapped around. She ends up with it again and scores. Sage Christopher, the senior, is doing everything for Lehigh Valley tonight.
senior leadership at its finest, but here's Feliciano at the other end. Bernazel, Cassandra Rodriguez to Curry. Feliciano's left alone, can't make him pay. Crozier the board, and Lehigh Valley is starting to get in their groove. Toretta to Oliver, she goes up, can't finish, gets her own miss, fouled. As we see, and Rocky Curry has just fouled out. Yeah, yeah, that was a foul. That was a bit of an aggressive one. That's, that's her fifth, and she is gone. And that is huge for Penn State Hazleton, because she's really, in my opinion, been the heartbeat for them tonight. She has done everything. The sophomore out of Darby, Pennsylvania. Crozier's floater off the inbound won't go. Feliciano's got it. Here comes Bernazau, it's a three on one. Into the corner, Rodriguez will try a three. Short, she hasn't been able to find her rhythm in this second half. 3.45 to go, Toretta. Lehigh Valley trying to close it out in advance. Oliver across the court, Columna for three. No, Christopher again, she is doing everything. Toretta again for three, yes! Gianna Toretta's cooking! Lehigh Valley's up 10. And now the Lehigh Valley fans are in it. A kick ball first, and Columna knew it. 3.16 to go. Penn State Lehigh Valley has turned the switch on in quarter four. First double digit lead of the night for Penn State Lehigh Valley. Couldn't come at a better time. But Hazleton might still have a little gas left in the tank. Here's Feliciano. Too strong. And it's to Christopher via a deflection. And here's Toretta. This quarter has been hers. She directs traffic. Here's Oliver. Drives in. Scoop layup short. Crozier taps it home. Strength in numbers for Penn State Lehigh Valley. And an air ball there. And it's not working for Hazleton now. Here comes Toretta. Bulldozes her way in Oliver Crozier. It'll stay here, but we mentioned now they're only dressing six because Curry fouled out how important the Lehigh Valley depth was going to be, and you're seeing it here. Yeah, I mean, you've, you've kind of been seeing it, seeing it throughout the whole game because even at the end of the first half, Penn State Hazleton, they were gassed, and Penn State Lehigh Valley just kept subbing in fresh legs, and that's when we saw Penn State Lehigh Valley kind of pull away a little bit. And Lee was fouled on the inbound. It's on the floor. But she's going to the line. She was 0 for 4 there in the third quarter. We'll see what happens on this trip. If the momentum can feed her to knock these down as Lehigh Valley's into the bonus. But for Hazleton, Rocky Curry losing her. She was keeping them organized on the court. You've seen the last few possessions down. Hazleton hasn't really been able to set up in an offense and that's allowed fast break opportunities for Lehigh Valley. So, or excuse me, we're not in the bonus yet. Referees have changed the Decision again, so Lehigh Valley retains the possession. Two and a half to go. Now they'll do motion to take some time off the clock. Their lead is 12 and they're in a comfortable spot right now. Newman off the side of the board, wouldn't go. James the rebound, here's Bernazau. It's gotta happen now for Hazleton, and it won't. Nyla Newman with a steal. The other way for Lehigh Valley. Good pass to her sister. It pays to have the, the connection there for Nia Newman and Nyla Newman. That's more than team chemistry. That's family bonding and a 14 point lead now for the hosts. James moves it around inside. Here is Feliciano now. This scoring drought is now over. And a quick timeout taken, it's a 30 second. They're down by 12, a minute 40 to go. Tyler, there's always a chance, but what are you saying if you're Coach Anushko in that timeout right now? Go out there and you, you, honestly, you gotta score at the other end, all right? You gotta score easy, and then I guess it, with it being a playoff game, we're gonna start fouling, and then just hope that they miss their free throws. I mean, you gotta make your shots at the other end, and you can't, 
can't really have second chance opportunities because that's just wasting time. Right. And Lehigh Valley, if you do foul them, they haven't necessarily been good from the line tonight. They have struggled, so it wouldn't be the worst thing to foul them, but it starts with scoring at your own end. They're going to be on defense to start this possession. Game is not over till it's over, but the three seed are in treading water mode right now, just trying to stay above it. Here comes Nyla Newman, gets a screen from Young. Well, they don't seem interested in fouling. They want to just see how this thing plays out. Mobley. Nyla Newman. Lee draws the foul and she'll shoot two. She's been the one that was struggling shooting tonight. So, I mean, if you're going to foul somebody, I mean, throughout the year she's been a great shooter. But if you're going to foul somebody, it's, it's her for tonight. As Yep tried to go for the reverse and was fouled on the way up. She can't hit that one either. It's a one of two trip for Chanel Lee. She was 0 for 5 prior to that, so now she's one of six. But the lead now at 13 and looking good from a Lehigh Valley perspective with 70 seconds to go. Feliciano, Ashley James, good close down by Lehigh Valley, not allowing a shot. Bernazau will shoot one and score it. That was forced, it worked out. Another timeout by Hazelton. Down 11, 58 seconds to go. It's, it's, it's gonna be a tough comeback here, if I'm being honest. It's gonna have to be a lot of things falling perfectly for Penn State Hazelton, but hey, I've seen crazier. A lot would need to happen in the next 58 seconds. It's not over to the clock, it's zeros. That's exactly right. A technical foul was called. So Chanel Lee will shoot a technical free throw. She misses, so she'll get one more, but one of seven at the line tonight. And she gets that one. So now they're up by 12. And that certainly doesn't help you if you're no. Penn State Hazleton. Because now Lehigh Valley gets the ball again. Exactly. But Hazleton, you cannot discredit how well they played through three quarters tonight. They were right with Lehigh Valley and they played their tails off and fully deserved to be in the playoffs this year, but it just looks like they're gonna come up short. And absolutely, and things that... Bernazau gets a floater to go. And one thing that like nobody really gets is the seven players. Like playing with seven players is just impressive on its own and be able to keep up with a team like Penn State Lehigh Valley is. Who has 16. Exactly, it's, it's impressive. Do you imagine if, it were, if Hazleton even had maybe 10 or 11, not exactly. even fully 16 like Lehigh Valley, but 10 or 11, this game could look a lot different. But that's something for the future that Coach Anushko is building for. He said there'll be a lot more depth on the team next year as Newman Puts the finishing touches on this one for Lehigh Valley. And now the next 19 seconds, just about seeing it out. And Penn State Lehigh Valley is going to prepare for Wednesday's contest out west against Penn State Beaver with a trip to the Bryce Jordan Center on the line. But for tonight, they had to really work for this one. But in the end, Penn State Lehigh Valley survives and advances with a 75-63 win over Penn State Hazleton. It's their third win in three tries against Hazleton this season. Tyler, it was a great game. Everything you could ask for in a playoff game and for the last home game for Penn State Lehigh Valley. They gave us a scare, but they got it done. This is the part that stinks, is watching the other team that had a great year, great run, put up a great fight. Unfortunately, season come to an end, and you see the emotions coming out for Penn State Hazleton, but man, they certainly played their tails off tonight, and I give all props to Hazleton, their coaching staff, and the team in general. They really worked hard tonight.
it's tough to play with seven players. We mentioned that, but they did themselves proud, and that's what Coach Anushko, I think, will be saying to them on their about an hour and a half bus trip home. But here comes Coach Lori Khalil. She's fired up, and Gianna Toretta, our player of the game as well, will be with Derek. But for Lehigh Valley, they survive in advance. And Derek, we send you down to head coach Lori Khalil. Thanks, guys. I'm down here with Coach. Coach, thoughts of the game and overall today for your team's performance? You know what? They gutted it out. But, I mean, Hazleton played amazing. Like, they, they were just tough from start to finish. Um, I, Coach Jeff does an amazing job. Um, I, we, we, were, we gutted it out, though. We gutted it out. And this time of year, well, well, it was good. So, proud of them. Take me through Gianna Toretta's performance in the four, uh, fourth quarter. Two big threes to stretch your lead to six. I know. When Gianna, Gianna's got a competitive fire. She's, she got, like, her brother's a UFC fighter, so she got that, like, crazy, that crazy drive. When she gets going, like, it just energizes the whole entire team. Thoughts of going into next week's final? Oh my, we're, well, we got it Wednesday. We got to take care of Wednesday. All right, we got a big one. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, Joey Drip, Tyler, you. Thank you, guys. But PSULV faithful. Appreciate everybody. All right. Thanks, Coach. Good luck next week. Ray and Gianna. Gianna, thoughts on today's win? Big win to advance and move on. Yes, yeah, big win. We have Beaver coming up next. We lost them last year in the semifinals. We have revenge on them, and we just got to bring it. What's your message going to be the message to you guys this week as you're going in for almost a revenge game? Um, messages that we're just going to win and dominate, and chip is the next ring there. We need the ring. We need the chip. What was going through your mind when you shot the, knocked down those two big threes to extend your lead? Um, I'm a three-point shooter, so I knew it was going in all automatic, and that's it. Thanks. Good luck next week. Thank you. Guys, back to you. All right, Derek, thank you very much. And Gianna Toretta did everything that Penn State Lehigh Valley could have asked of her in that fourth quarter to help build that two-point lead up to eventually a 12-point win. And Tyler, the final stats for both teams tonight. I first want to say I love the confidence. <laughs> as soon as it left my hand, I knew it was going in. I mean, I wish I could say the same, but I can't. Um, Janelle Oliver, six points. Uh, Chanel Lee having 16. Uh, Nyla Newman, three. Samantha Columna, two. Gabby uh Garcola eight, uh, Kaya Mobley one, uh, Gianna Newman 12, uh, excuse me, uh, six points. Gianna Toretta, 18, led the way for them. Uh, Sage Christopher having eight points. She did a great job down low tonight. And Raina Young, one point, and Aaliyah Crozier with four. And if we take a look over at Penn State uh, Hazleton, the Rocky Curry, great job. Unfortunately, she fouled out tonight. She was really controlling the paint. She had 13 points tonight. Jenny Rivero having 13 points as well. Uh, Cassandra Rodriguez, six points, uh, two points, and then Natasha Feliciano, 15, and Johnson having 15. They all, they all played great tonight for only having seven players. I mean, you really can't complain at all. Absolutely, and this has been a tremendous ride, our first year covering Penn State Lehigh Valley, hopefully many more years to come, and for uh, Derek, who's done a great job at the sidelines, also in color occasionally. Tyler, you and I have done a great job together. I've appreciated you coming in. Thanks to everyone involved with making this happen. Rich Fatzinger, uh, Lori, of course, Al, Dave, I guess. <laughs> uh, yeah. Everyone's done a great job. And our producer, Sean, camera crew, everyone that's worked on this project. For one last time, Penn State Lehigh Valley, 75-63 to 63 over Penn State Hazleton. They have an away trip to Beaver up next. But for Tyler Carbon, Derek Moore, our producer, Sean, Joey Draper, signing off.